basically give you a few hints about what to do if you're presented with some sort of an unusual shape with unusual angle measurements, and you're trying to do some solving, maybe using Snell's Law. So in this particular example, I have an odd-shaped material that I want to know the index of refraction of, and it's surrounded by, let's say, air, n is 1. So you're given the external n value, and you're looking for this material's n value. You're also shown that the path of a beam of light is straight through here, and then when it gets to this next boundary, it refracts outward. So you're probably thinking it'd be nice to use Snell's Law, and I agree. Snell's Law says n1 sine theta1 equals n2 sine theta2. So pretty much if you know two angles and one index of refraction, then you can find the missing index of refraction. And the key with this problem is to decide at which boundary do you want to use Snell's Law. There's two boundaries in this case, two places where the light changes from one medium to the other medium. Here's boundary one, when it goes from the air to this unknown material. And here's boundary two, where it goes from the unknown material into the air. And one of these boundaries is going to be so much easier to work with than the other. So my big hint is to look at this and think, which boundary is going to be the most useful? At boundary one, you can see that this light is entering along the normal. The incident angle is zero degrees. And that's a special case when there's no refraction, no bending happening, because the refracted angle is also zero degrees, meaning if it goes in along the normal, it doesn't bend. It just goes straight on through. So if you try and use this intersection of putting zero degrees, and zero degrees, you're going to have an unsolvable equation set up in that you're not going to be able to figure out what this other n is. So I'm going to argue that this boundary is the easier one to look at. Ignore the boundary where it goes straight through. That's not going to help you. This boundary will help you. This is a good place to try and use Snell's Law. So that's my first hint, figure out what boundary you want to use. The second is these are defined really specifically. The angle of incidence is the angle between the incident light and the normal line. And the angle of refraction is defined as the angle between the refracted light and the normal light. And there's no normal line drawn in this picture. So that would be another good step to do, would be to just draw in the normal line. Normal means perpendicular. In this case, it's perpendicular to the boundary. So here's the boundary, and here's 90 degrees to that boundary. So I'm going to estimate, you just the protractor, but I'll just estimate 90 degrees to that boundary. That's the normal line. So if you're using this boundary, this is the angle of incidence, theta 1, if you will, and this is the angle of refraction, theta 2, if you will. And so as long as you have enough angles in your picture to figure out what this is and what this is, then you should be good to go. Good luck.